For more than a thousand years, the resurrected Sith Empire advanced unchecked in deep space. All the while, we Jedi believed the Sith were extinct. Though several self-proclaimed Sith Lords challenged the Republic, they were all fallen Jedi, not true Sith. The true Sith were the biological descendants of the ancient red-skinned race native to Korriban. The true Sith were extinct, except those who fled into exile 900 years ago. The success of their reincarnated civilization is testimony to the dark genius of the Sith Emperor. But the dedication of the Imperial people must be acknowledged as well. In our brief glimpses into the Empire's secret history, one name stands out. Grand Moff Odile Viken, the founder of the modern Imperial military. As a child, Viken was one of the few hundred survivors who fled the carnage on Korriban at the end of the Great Hyperspace War. To escape their enemies, the Emperor led a small fleet of Sith ships in a hyperspace jump into uncharted regions. The Exile fleet wandered in deep space for many years thereafter. During this time, Viken learned navigation and became one of the fleet's most respected pilots. The survivors finally settled on the jungle world of Drummondkos. There the Emperor revealed his vision to build a new civilization of unrivaled efficiency. And he promised his people vengeance. He promised them an empire destined to dominate the galaxy. An empire destined to bring about the Republic's destruction. The Emperor's role in Reconstruction was as visionary alone. He said to have withdrawn into isolation and left the logistics to a newly formed Dark Council and to loyal Imperial leaders like Odile Viken. While the Dark Council debated long-term plans in the Sith power structure, the young Viken took on the monumental task of establishing order. Viken drafted every non-force user of age into the new Imperial military. He then developed the Imperial Military Training Regiment that remains to this day. With his army well-trained, Viking led a campaign to carve a footprint into the wilderness of Drummondkos to create room for the Empire's new capital to flourish. Records suggest that during the campaign, he personally slew a rabbit Tarant attack on the site where the Imperial Citadel stands today. After establishing the Empire's dominion on Drummondkos, Viken turned his attention to constructing a new Imperial Navy. Dividing his troops between engineering, mining, and manufacturing, he laid the groundwork for an ambitious plan, the creation of the Imperial Armada. By his own estimates, the task would take centuries. Viken knew he would never see even a fraction of his plan's success. Nonetheless, he garnered the support of the Dark Council and started the work. It was this act which earned Viken the honor of being the first Grand Moff recognized in the new Imperial military. Grand Moff Viken was eventually killed during an Imperial campaign to conquer an alien system in deep space. He died in battle on the bridge of a prototype Star Destroyer a fitting end to the first Imperial Grand Moff. Though Viking was lost all those centuries ago, his plan and his name lived on to inspire countless generations who marched under the Imperial banner. Viking's story represents the surprising loyalty the Imperial citizens show to an empire in which they will always be subservient to the Sith. I believe the roots of this loyalty lie in the events of the Great Hyperspace War. I'll explain my theory in a subsequent report.